Hello again people, right, um, sorry about the rushed video, the last one, um, it was because I've got a friend who's uh, got a very sick dog and uh, I thought I might have to go over and uh, be with her, but she's called me and um, said not to bother. So um, this is getting ready I think for a reversal. So what I'm going to do is do get rid of all the data on here, all the silly lines, but I'm going to change the average daily range on this to just four days and see what uh, what that tells me. So uh, indicators list. Number of days. Well, let's go for five. I think that's uh, quite a standard five days in a week. So we'll see what the last five days were. That's a bit more realistic. 274, 254, uh, thin market because it's Easter bank holiday. So this wouldn't surprise me if this is starting to look uh, like reversal territory. So it's a five minute chart. We don't want to be interested in any reversals on five minute. Um, you know, do your own research on that guys, but uh, 15 minute reversal would be my minimum. And that then um, represents, in my opinion, a one minute trend. So if you're not familiar with what I do, the reversals are the candlestick low, high, high, low, high, 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 low, lower, high, lower, low, pull, uh, close. That means this, this one minute trend or 15 minute candlestick trend has um, reversed. And you'll notice it doesn't happen that often. And when it does, you get a trade. This one didn't close, it's just some do, some don't. It closed down here below that low there, low, high, high, low, high, 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 actually, was that the high? If that wasn't the high, then we might have had, a, that might have been valid. Highest, 19955, high 199548, no, it was this one. So it didn't close below that low until that point there. And that's what I like, if you won't have heard me say this very often, but I prefer shallow reversals. So that that to there is not shallow that to there is what I call shallow you've got room to some sort of uh, support uh, that will be tested so um, but that's sort of arbitrary so we won't get too much into that let's get rid of um, the objects on here and uh, then I will um, <clears throat> analyze this for a potential reversal. Sorry, I should have done this before I uh, started the video. That's good enough. So, start on the monthly. We do today's monthly low, uh, this month's low, because uh, that will be affecting price. Obviously, the high won't be anything of interest to us now. Um, that resistance level on that candle there will be of interest because that uh, may be a stopping point if this does reverse. What I'm looking for now is a reversal to the north side. It's getting near the end of the day, the end of uh, most people's working week, and. Um, as such, I would expect this potentially to um, give us a reversal trade. I'm not necessarily looking for a trade now, having had eight winners. Sorry, that wasn't meant to go. That was the wrong one. But if one presents itself, then I will take it. One thing I don't often talk about is the fact that all my trades, you'll notice, and I think this is a sign of a good system, I will trade up, down, and I will trade any currency pair. Um, I think, what have I traded? GCAD, G, GA, gold, a couple of times. Uh, hang on a sec. Um, GJ, GN, and NZCAD. So, a mixture, and uh, not all buys, you know, I'm not just, uh, a, you know, there's a couple of cells in there and uh, three or four buys and whatever so you know that to me is the sign of a solid system 
doesn't matter what you're trading, I could be trading the FTSE, the DAX, um, I'm, I'm looking at stocks and it looks like it, uh, it uh, trades perfectly well as well, although there are gaps and, and stuff in data, so uh, it's a work in progress. So we'll put a vertical on there and I will have to look over there on the left hand side as well as what's going on here as well. So this is lifting off that, uh, it's starting to move north now anyway. Um, we need the support level in there because support will potentially stop price and be a target for old support becomes new resistance. Nothing else in, of interest in here at the moment. So we go over to the left hand side. and uh, stick a few levels that may be of interest in there so that uh, high there will stick in there we'll stick that high in there as well we'll stick that low in we'll stick this uh, low in as well not sure how it relates to price but it does you know as I keep saying it looks like spaghetti junction looks like a complete mess but when you get down to a five and one minute chart, you will, the gaps will appear for you. I implore you to watch all my other videos, well not all of them, most of the recent ones. And, um, you know, just familiarise yourself with uh, what I'm doing here. Sorry, I meant to put that on the um, resistance. I'm rushing a bit because I don't want this video to go on too long. And uh, I've got some chores to get on with later. So, back over to the current time frame and uh, then down to the daily price is around here daily there's a daily support there that I don't think we've uh, addressed and what I suggest you do guys if you're new to this is do this whenever you come back to your charts or when you get up first thing in the morning or when you get home after work whatever time zone you're in and what it does for me is zones me in and uh, gives me a fresh look on what's going on. You can put some ascending trend lines on there. Uh, Gordon Bennett wouldn't want to have got caught short in a short trade with those spikes up there. That is mental. Excuse my French. What is that? Eighty-six pips, something like that. Jesus. Yeah, it is 86, isn't it? Um, right, and uh, so nothing really of interest here. Go and look on the uh, left-hand side again. Find our vertical line. Oh, here we are. So price is hovering around here by the looks of it so uh, we've got nothing there nothing there so that gaps clear and we're looking to go long anyway so um, we might as well put uh, a resistance level down there because it might surprise us later on go further down and then we've got to uh, adjust our so we might as well put the lines in now that's the high of that one put the high of that one in just in case it's not already there and put the high of that one in case it goes down and that green one in there if it's not already there and might as well <coughs> excuse me <coughs> one on there one on there and one on that little one in the middle that one I think we've got to do haven't we right okay so back to the live uh, area of chart so now you can see why this has stopped here it's got masses of massive old resistance and and this here this you know it's all been affected by these this stuff from way back in 2016 it's just it's hit it used it as uh, um, resistance 
then flipped over and used it as there was a massive level right there from 2016 so h4 so you can see why it stops here now and this is just crashing down again at the moment uh, let's uh, put support on there I'm not even bothered about going on the left hand side on H4 even if I can't if, if I could get the data because this gap's massive now. It's all about this this side of the chart now. So um, nice bit of room to the long side if I want to uh, get catch a reversal. So really we want to be waiting for minimum we've got to be waiting for H4 green or something like that. H1 green don't want to be trading against H1. It's overextended now, of course. You know, we've got to see some green on the higher time frames before we can even consider that M15 potential reversal that I talked about earlier. So this is still going down. I do not want to be trading this uh, short. So now I need to just start drawing my levels on the highs. So as it stands, we'll assume this is going to go a bit lower. So we'll say high, low, lower, high, lower, low. So that would be a target for an M15 reversal, the H1 high. Be aware that that uh, supports in our way, so we need to put that in as well. And that can be a useful indicator because if that support gets broken by an H1 candle, and it closes through it then that's given way support will not have held as resistance that's how we use those uh, slightly higher time frame levels double check I didn't miss anything on H4 no I didn't that's all factored in that one so then we do a M30 same thing this this is an inside bar but M30 there's still there will still be plenty of room for a potential trade between um, these levels or up between here and here I'm talking about I'll look at the size of it before I get distracted I want to put one on there and we can use the supports if they fail to hold as resistance as potential entry levels as well then we look at M15 I know it looks a mess guys but believe me when you get on the M1 it all becomes clear so M15 we've currently got a bit of a mess going on here so uh, because technically high low and then all of these don't count and then a lower high and a lower low so this would still be the important level to the upside so we will have a look at the distance between those two now there notice there's nothing between there and there that's 16 pips you know that is massive bearing in mind up to about two months ago all I needed for my daily wages as it were was five pips and if I could, took two trades that was uh, a double day I uh, took the missus out for a uh, slap up Burger King meal <laughs> not so M15 now we've got the candlestick trend on here high low lower high lower low so uh, you know when these if this one carries on going down you move your reversal level it's the reversal level that's critical and uh, I can show you the M1 and you know here's your trend now on M1 and where was that level I can't remember that's 16 17 pips looks massive on this this is a scalpers dream that was 11 pips that's the wrong one so it must be a bit higher and this keeps on going down but notice now how all these levels uh, that's from six, 20, uh, 2016 it's been used uh, what's this one from 2020 2020 2020 yeah these are all recent but these are this is interesting it's using these old levels now 2016 again and look how it's held as support this is how you use the old levels 
as your um, 2016 again as I said there's tons of old resistance below the price resistance being tested as support as we speak so um, there's not a lot more I can tell you about this except I'm waiting for a long trade and I will, this is mapped out now the only ones that uh, need moving as I say when these H1s break the low of the previous H1 then we move our reversal level down hopefully that makes sense let's just show you again don't want to make this video too long so now that one's broken that one so that that is a genuine H1 um, resistance high there I think yeah H1 high I'll highlight it now what I mean is that's the wrong one it's that one there what I mean is now when this one closes in three minutes two seconds actually if this drops below that then you move your reversal level to that H1 high and then we sing the song high low lower high lower low and the new song low high higher low higher high and break and then we wait for the pullback and then we wait for the uh, all the ducks to line up again do the song on the lower time frame make sure this is all aligned look this is turning green now on H1 and uh, we continue like that so you must not trade my recommendations guys but watch this for a possible um, uh, spring back to the uh, H18EMA. Okay, thank you for watching and have a good evening. I will probably make an update to this if I get a chance to uh, do it. There's nothing to stop this just continuing on, maybe breaking through all this support, ready for some, some sort of activity in the Asian session. Tons of all this uh, 2016 stuff here. Totally amazing. This is wouldn't like, you know Aussie dollar is worthless um, even a weekly low from 2016 so got a lot of lot of effort to get down there to be honest with you so we shall see anyway thanks for watching have a good evening guys